Welcome back everybody to the Wandering Samurai Study, in which we review and analyze every single act told in Rurouni Kenshin, and today's act is Act 73, Encounter in the Forest Part 2. And just as I said in the last video about the Secret Life of Characters page revealing that Anji was created for the purpose of Sunosuke, we got Anji's Secret Life of Characters page and it tells us that Anji was essentially created for the purpose of Sunosuke. Not the character design, the character design was apparently created a while ago and much like Sojiro too apparently uh, for like a pilot or, or some kind of like test manga or something. I don't, I don't know exactly but it's pretty cool that he had this character design on reserve and he just needed something for the purpose of Sonosuke's story in this moment and he found Anji thought that it was a good fit for this part of the story and just utilized him which is which is really cool just to think that like how long did that character design sit around? Was he uh, kind of antsy to use it? I don't know, but Anji is just a really cool design and we'll kind of get into him uh, in just a bit. But let's get into the chapter summary review and we'll get into Anji and Sonosuke and Captain Sagara. Oh, and an announcement at the end of the video, but I will save that for the end of the video. So let's get into the chapter summary review. Sonosuke continues to train in the mastery of the two layers. It's been three days and Anji has his doubts that Sonosuke will be able to pull it off. Anji offers Sonosuke the opportunity to back out of their deal to learn the technique in a week or die, and Sonosuke feels more dedication to make it to the end of the week. By the night of day 6, Sonosuke begins to feel his doubts about learning the technique when the ghost of Captain Sagara shows himself to Sonosuke and tries to talk him out of the deal. The next morning, Anji finds Sonosuke passed out, assuming that he died of exhaustion. Sonosuke wakes up to reveal his mastery of two layers. The two shake hands, Sonosuke is pointing in the direction of Kyoto, and Sojiro emerges to notify Anji of the Jupongatana summon. Alright, so let's start off by talking about Anji. I'm a little bit puzzled when it comes to Anji. Do all Fallen Months kind of look like Anji? Is it just part of that character design that he had on reserves? Or, um, you know, like the, the, the eyeshadows underneath his eyes. Is that something that Fallen Monks kind of uh, have? The big bulkiness and being strong, is that part of Anji? These are kind of questions that are kind of lingering in my head because of the reveal that he is a uh, character design that was left on um on reserve and pulled out for the narrative did he had to make adjustments um my guess though is that maybe not all fallen monks look bulky and strong like anji because it seems that anji is training because he still believes in saving the world and it seems that like a fallen monk and um, somebody who doesn't believe in the powers of the buddha would probably live maybe a little bit more hedonistic. I don't know that for certain. It's just kind of a guess. But then again, they talked about in the last chapter about fallen monk powers. And that's kind of how it opened the door for Sonosuke to learn the Futai no Kowame. But nonetheless, that's pretty much the lingering questions that I have about Anji. But let's get into uh, Captain Sagara. So the ghost of Captain Sagara actually shows up and I love how like comedic it is for Sunosuke when he sees him that he uh, he's almost certain that he died and I think that Sunosuke being able to see his ghost is is probably because Sunosuke was really close to death's door and his ghost was able to kind of show up in this moment as opposed to other moments in Sunosuke's life and it kind of really goes to show just how far Sunosuke pushed himself to try and learn this technique that he was on death's door to the point that the ghost of his former captain shows up and I think that it's really sweet that the captain showed up for Sunosuke whether it's a figment of Sunosuke's imagination or Sunosuke was actually in contact with the spirit world we don't really know it's vague enough that we can kind of fill in those uh those blanks for ourselves but if in the case that it's in Sunosuke's head and uh, it's, it's just from the pure exhaustion that this is where Sonosuke's mind went, uh, that he sees the ghost of his former captain. I think it's really sweet because it just shows just how much the captain truly means to Sonosuke. And if it is the ghost, <laughs> I think it's really sweet of the ghost to come and visit Sonosuke because it shows just how much uh, Sonosuke means to the captain and that Sonosuke continuing to survive or to be alive 
is important to the ghost of Captain Sagara. I don't know, I just think that whichever direction you decide to look at it from, it's still pretty sweet that these two characters are kind of talking to each other, whether it's real or it's not real. But the point of the captain showing up, because there is an actual narrative point to it, and it's to further develop Sonosuke's agency in this arc. All throughout the arc, we have been talking about Sonosuke's motivation to go to Kyoto for the purpose of proving himself to Kenshin and to Saito, to prove that he can be an asset. And we get a little bit of a further explanation on this, a kind of like we dig a little bit past the surface and it all comes back to the captain the relationship that Sonosuke has with the captain he sees Kenshin very similar to the way that he saw the captain it's it's the whole reason way back in the beginning of the the, the manga he was able to drop his guard and, and soften his heart because Kenshin reminded him of Captain Sagara. The the views that they have were very similar and it's the reason that he decided to stick around Kenshin. And because of that, he does not want to see Kenshin potentially die, especially for the Meiji. He does not want to see Kenshin die. And if he can help Kenshin not die, if he can do anything in his power to help Kenshin win this battle, he wants to be there for Kenshin because he wasn't able to be there for the captain when he was a child. And and it goes even further because he, he he's not just to protect himself from seeing another person that he admires die, but it's also to protect the Kenshin Gumi, Yahiko, Kaoru, Megumi, and everybody else that looks up to Kenshin. He doesn't want to see them suffer the way that he suffered when he saw his captain die. And that's so, so noble and so powerful of Sonosuke. All right, so let's talk about Sonosuke not dying. Throughout this chapter, we kind of see Anji a little bit annoyed with Sonosuke trying to get this done within a week because he feels that Sonosuke is trying to trivialize this technique or this, this art form because it took him a lifetime to learn it. And Sonosuke is trying to kind of bulldoze it, steamroll it in that week and there's an inverse at the end of the chapter when he finds Sonosuke able to master the technique when he thinks that he died and he wakes up and he's like nah I, I got this and he boom boom the rock beneath him Anji tries to kind of trivialize uh, Sonosuke's technique by telling him that it's very impressive that he's a very impressive young man or something like that and Sonosuke has to remind him, was like, no, 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 no. It took you a lifetime to get this. I was able to do it in a week, but I almost died doing it. I don't know if you push yourself to that limit, but I almost died. So please give me a little bit more credit than just being an impressive young man. <laughs> and I thought that that was really cool. Not a whole lot to say about it. It's just kind of like a narrative thing that I noticed in this chapter where Anji's a little bit annoyed uh, for the trivialization of Sonosuke and then Sonosuke kind of turns it on him. It was like, hey, don't trivialize me. <laughs> this was this was hard. <laughs> and uh, let's go ahead and finish off by talking about Sojiro showing up at the end of the chapter. Of course, this is the big twist ending if you're reading Rurouni Kenshin for the first time that Anji, this, this cool guy that Sonosuke just met, is actually on the opposite end of <laughs> Sonosuke. And it's it's really cool because we know that these two guys who cultivated a pretty uh, cool relationship in this week or so, learned to respect each other, I guess, are now going to find themselves on the opposite end of things when this story reaches its climax. It's kind of like a nail biter. It's it's a good cliffhanger for the for what it is. And I think that it's a cool setup that was set up in the last chapter and then, you know, kind of takes its shape here fully where in the last chapter he asks Sonosuke how he feels about the Meiji and how he doesn't like the Meiji either and so this is why they kind of jived a little bit where they felt like okay well we both don't like the Meiji but now we're going to see how they differ in their views of the Meiji and that's going to be interesting when we finally get to it and um, especially because Anji is going to be working for her Shishio and it just seems like Anji would not be the type to work with Shishio but that, that's just what makes it really really cool and we're gonna get those answers when we eventually get there but um that's pretty much it this is act 73 of Rurouni Kenshin 
Alrighty, let's get to the quick announcement and we'll wrap up the video. But this is going to be the last video that I create for the Wandering Samurai study. For just a moment, we're going to go on break again because I <laughs> need to be able to make a few more videos to kind of put myself ahead of the schedule. The way I work is having these chapters done ahead of time and having videos on backup so that I can be able to consistently upload the videos. However, because of like outside forces and stuff, it's kind of hindered me in uploading. And so without having a video ready at the end of the week, I was uploading and that backup or that reserves that I had, I stopped having them. And now I'm just making the video week to week and it it's it's really hard so I, I need to give myself a little bit of a buffer zone that doesn't mean that i'm going to stop working I'm, or that i'm even taking a break it's just i need to make three or four weeks worth of videos ahead of time <laughs> and then just start releasing them so it just give me a little bit of time and we'll be back on the weekly release schedule hopefully hopefully but uh like i said this has been Act 73 of Rerun and Kenshin. If you want to see more, then consider subscribing to the channel. Leave a thumbs up and comment down below something that you enjoyed about this chapter. I definitely love all of the stuff with Captain Sugara. I love the comedic, uh, the comedic beats with Sonosuke in this chapter and the, the whole ghost stuff. But Captain Sugara and what it means for Sonosuke was the big highlight for me. Um, let me know what you guys think down below. I'll see you guys all in the next one. But... Bye, Cha. Oro? Sagara, Taicho. Yume demo mite no ga? Sore tomo maburoshi ka? Oh! Hashi! Hashi ga ni!